Hello students, this is Mrs. Jennifer de Cruz from Lilavati Lalji Dayal College of Commerce. And in today's class, we are going to study OCM chapter number five, Emerging Modes of Business. So students, before starting with this interesting chapter, let me tell you all that the total weightage of this chapter is 10 marks with option and seven marks without options. So let us begin with the first concept and that is e-business. So let us understand what does e-business mean? So students, the term e-business, that is electronic business, is derived from the terms email and e-commerce. To make your life simpler, students, in simple words, we can say e-business is the business which is done online with the help of internet, okay? So e-business or electronic business is the administration of conducting business via the internet, okay? So now let us see what the first answer tries to tell us. Okay, so here we are going to study about the scope of e-business. So students, any one of this can be asked and explain the terms for two marks into your board exams. Okay, so let us come to the first scope that is business to business that is also known as B2B. Okay, so what happens here? The business and services, uh, the offering of business and services are with the business entities only. They do not involve any individual consumer into it. So two business firms conduct business together. Second one is business to consumer. So your students, the transaction in business to consumers are between the business firm and the consumer. That is why it is known as B to C. Third one, C to B, that is consumer to business. In this transaction, students, the consumers, they request a specific service provider from the business. For example, uh, if you want some pest control that is to be done into your house. So here, this is an example of consumer to business, e-business, okay? Next one is consumer to consumer. Your students, it facilitates online transaction between two consumers, okay, two people. They uh, you know they involve into electronic business, okay, which is done between two consumers only. That is C to C. Then you have B to A. Now what is B to A? B to A stands for business to administration. Now what happens here, students? Uh, in this, all the transactions are conducted online, okay between the business firm and public administration. For example, if my business firm wants to pay some taxes okay, to the government, so this form of business becomes business to administration. So your payment of taxes, your registration process is the example of business to administration. Last one is consumer to administration, that is C to A. So your students, all the transactions, all electronic transactions are conducted between the individual consumer and the public administration. For example, if you need to apply for your Aadhaar card, your PAN card, your passport, so that comes under C to A, that is consumer to administration, okay? Now let's move on to the next answer. That is benefits of e-business, okay? Now, what do you understand by the term benefits? So benefits, another word you can say, advantages of e-business. So how is e-business useful, okay? So to remember this answer, students, we have a code word, gem, CLS, okay? So gem, what is gem, CLS? So into your textbook, you have eight pointers that is there. But if you need to remember it with a code word, you can use gem CLS. So let's understand each one in detail. First one is ease in formation. Okay. So your formation of the e-business, okay, is very, very easy. Okay. You can easily set up your e-business. Okay. It is not as difficult as your traditional business. Second one, lower investment requirements. So the investment requirement that is there into e-business is quite low because the simple reason is there is no physical existence of the store that is there and it can be managed with less man manpower as well, okay? Third one is convenience, okay? As we all know that internet, okay, is available 24-7 for 365 days, okay? So here we can, you know, uh, log in at any point of time. So buying, selling can be done anytime, okay? It is quite convenient and it is quite flexible also. Next, you have global access, okay? So your students in e-business, the buying and selling can be done, you know, without considering the boundaries, okay? You can do business uh, globally also. You can do international business as well. 
Next is movement towards a paperless society. Now, what is paperless society? Because of the use of internet students, the uh, usage of paper okay, is reduced to a great extent. Next is speed. Okay, so buying and selling can be done at the click of on the mouse. Okay, so just click on the mouse and you have you know either you can buy it or you can sell it just at the click of the mouse. Next one is government support. Students, you're the government provides you know a favorable uh, climate environment. You can say for setting up your e-business. It helps to start e-business. Last one is easy payment, okay? So the payment that is there in your e-business can be done faster by using debit card, credit card, fund transfer, etc. So e-business is important in these following concepts, okay? So let's see what is it, GEM CLS. So G2, G2 stands for global access, government control. E2 stands for easy payment, easy information. M stands for movement towards a paperless society. C L S C stands for convenience. L stands for lower investment requirements, and S stands for speed. Okay. With this, we've completed the benefits of e-business. Now let us come to the disadvantages of e-business. That is the limitations of e-business. So students, of course, limitation is delivery time. Okay. So here also you have a code word GD LHS that is e-business is good, but it has little high risk and security issues. Okay, so GD LHS. So let's study the first elimination that is delivery time. Okay, so the delivery of the product takes time because in traditional business what happens you get the product as soon as you order, okay? as soon as you buy, but that does not happen in your online business. Next one is security issues, okay? You must have heard like a lot of people scam through online business, okay? It becomes very easier for the hackers to hack your financial details. So this e-business has certain security issues. Third one is government interference, okay? So government monitoring is always there, but this becomes a sort of interference in the functioning of e-business. Next, you can say lack of personal touch, okay? Now here, you cannot touch the product, you cannot see the product directly until and unless it is delivered at your doorstep. So while buying, there is no personal touch involved. Last one is high risk. So students here, as uh, the same, we do not know the party from whom we are purchasing, okay? It becomes a third party. So we do not know that party, hence this e-business is often, you know, um, it often has little higher risk. So GD, LHS means G stands for government interference, B stands for delivery time, L stands for lack of personal touch, X stands for higher risk, and S stands for security issues. Now let's move on to the next answer and that is outsourcing. Now what do you understand by the term outsourcing students? Outsourcing is a process of contracting some business function to specialized agencies, okay? For example, if your institution, okay, your college wants to hire a watchman, okay, uh, they do not want you know, to put in an ad to conduct the interview. So the college will outsource, okay, the watchman from a specialized agency. So this becomes outsourcing. That agency will directly provide our institution with the watchman. Okay, so this is outsourcing. So your okay, the company can benefit in two ways. It reduces its own cost. Okay, our cost is reduced because we do not have to keep our search on by giving ads in the newspaper. Second, it uses the expertise of firm which specializes in that particular kind of services. Now, the first or uh, the agency from where we have hired, okay, that is giving you know that is dealing in this or the particular kind of services. Hence, we can get quite better result. Okay. Now let's see, let's come on to the advantages of outsourcing students. So your first one we have overall cost advantage, okay? So your the, uh, outsourcing which is there will help you in having an overall cost advantage. You will save on cost big time. So students, the cost that is there is saved a big time because of outsourcing, okay? It also reduces uh, effort, okay? It saves time also on training. Second, it's saying it stimulates entrepreneurship, employment, and export. So because of outsourcing, okay, it gives a, you know, it stimulates entrepreneurship also. It stimulates employment and export too. 
third is low manpower cost okay so your so what happens students the manpower cost is lower okay uh, it is lesser than the host company next one you can say access to professional expert and high quality services okay so mostly the tasks that are given okay, they are always given to skilled people in that particular field so what happens because of this they provide a better service level to the organization next one is investment requirements are reduced so with this the help uh, you know what happens your students uh, your the company can focus on their core areas okay and what happens if they are focusing on core areas they do not look into small issues so because of this okay the investment requirement is also reduced and they can you know save and uh, save lots of money that is there so investment is reduced to a big extent next one is increase efficiency and productivity because of outsourcing uh, we have professionals who are hired okay so that in turn results in greater efficiency and productivity last one is knowledge sharing okay so here in students with the, uh, the companies you know they can focus on their core areas they can share knowledge okay from the outsourcing people okay they can share their expertise with their company and their better services so here in students if you want to remember this four word we have os likes a so what is os o stands for overall cost advantage s stands for stimulates entrepreneurship employment and export then like l i2 so l stands for low manpower cost i stands for investment requirement are reduced i stands for increased efficiency and productivity k knowledge sharing and a access to professional export and high quality services okay so your in students the four word is os that is outsourcing likes a a that is access to professional expert and high quality services now let's move on to the next answer that is disadvantages of outsourcing so your in the four word is la dio l a d e o so first one that of customer focus so your in students the outsourcing agencies okay they have a number of vendors okay so what happens sometimes they lack okay customer focus because of multiple organizations uh, to focus on they lack individual customer focus second is a threat to security and confidentiality so students the company's confidential data can be shared okay can be known to these outsource agencies which becomes a threat to security third is dissatisfactory services sometimes the outsourcing agencies okay because of number of issues to look at okay they offer certain dissatisfactory services as well fourth one is ethical issues the major ethical issue is that like if my country okay is outsourcing employees from some other country so that becomes a major ethical issue for us last is other disadvantages so here you have the understanding of the contract sometimes people do not understand the contract in a proper way then we have lack of communication poor quality and delayed services so l a d e o that is lack of customer focus a stands for a threat to security and confidentiality d stands for dissatisfactory services e stands for ethical issues and o is other disadvantages Let's move on to the next answer of this chapter, students. And here we have the three types of outsourcing that we need to study. So the first one is BPO, that is business process outsourcing. So what is BPO, students? Just understand the meaning of it. BPO refers to outsourcing of all the peripheral activities of the organization to an external organization, okay, to minimize the cost and to increase the efficiency for example we have customer care centers okay for various banks we have service providers so that is your bpo next one is your kpo that is knowledge process outsourcing so what is kpo it is a form of outsourcing in which knowledge related and information related work is carried out by workers in different company or by a subsidiary company of the same organization the third outsourcing is legal process outsourcing which is also known as lpo so lpo is a type of outsourcing that is specific to legal services okay ranging from drafting legal documents performing legal research to offering advice okay it refers to practice of law firm obtaining legal support services from an outside law firm or legal support services company okay 
Now let us see a distinction that is distinguished between your BPO and KPO. Okay. So the first one, student, the first pointer that is there, we have five pointers. So this can be asked as a distinguish between question this year in your board exams. So first one is meaning. So BPO, what is BPO? BPO refers to outsourcing of non-primary activities of the organization to an external organization to minimize cost and increase efficiency. Whereas what is KPO? It is another kind of outsourcing whereby Functions related to knowledge and information are outsourced to the third party service provider. Second one is degree of complexity. So BPO is less complex and KPO is a little bit complex. Requirement. So BPO requires what? It requires process expertise, whereas KPO it requires knowledge and expertise. Then the fourth point says talent requiring employees. So BPO requires what they do require good communication skill because you need to talk every time. And KPO they require professional qualified workers. So professionally they should be skilled. Last one is focus on. So what does BPO focus on? It focuses on low level processes, whereas KPO focuses on high level processes. Okay. So in this chapter, students, two answers are very very important. That is advantages and disadvantages of e-business and the second one is advantages and disadvantages of outsourcing. BPO, KPO, LPO can be asked, uh, one question can be asked as a distinguish between or else it can be asked and explain the terms. So with this we've completed chapter number five, emerging modes of business. Thank you.